Hello, my name is Zahi Ben Shabbat. I'm a senior prototype architect at AWS, and I'm here to talk about application development for Backstage IO on AWS. This is the chapter seven, authentication and auditing. Security is our first job at AWS. Just like any other solution, we have adopted best practices for security when building this solution. This include authentication, using temporary credentials, segregated access control, hardening security-related resources, and auditing actions. In this solution, we focus on the integration between external identities to AWS IAM. But before we can talk about, uh, let's first understand how backstage authentication process work. Backstage supports many identity providers and it can easily configure to connect and sync with your organization preferred IDP. We used Okta, but the process is similar to other IDPs. After configura configuring Backstage with an IDP, Backstage synchronizes the current users and groups so that there is a representation of the users and their associated groups in Backstage database. The developer can then use Backstage UI to log in using his IDP credentials. On success, the developer will be navigated to the Backstage homepage. Once the user is logged in, his Backstage identity is associated with the information that was synced from the IDP. Therefore, we can derive what groups the current user belongs to. This is an essential part of how we map these identities to AWS IAM and the associated allowed access the developer will have. Before we can talk about how does the developer get access to AWS, we need to continue our discussion about IDP membership groups. In order to map external groups identity to AWS, we created a security mapping table. The table we set on a DynamoDB and have a resource policy to restrict access for these roles mapping. We map an external IDP group to AWS role for a given environment, account and region. That role was created along with the environment provider for granular access to the resources in that environment. An administrator can update the table and create an appropriate mapping. Now let's see how the authentication process work. When a developer submits an action, such as creating a new app or starting or stopping an app, his request propagated to the AWS backend plugin, which we will follow four steps to provide the credentials for the request. Step one, resolve security mapping table name. By fetching an SSM parameter, we will resolve the DynamoDB table name for the security group mapping. Step two, resolve the IAM role from the authentication provider mapping by matching the developer group from the IDP to the mapping in the table. The mapping will return a role for a given account and given region. Step three, fetch temporary credentials for the des designated role using the role account and region. We can now submit a request to Amazon STS to get temporary credentials for our role. Step four, now we can use the credentials to process appropriate AWS service calls and submit the developer request. On a, on a side note, the origin role, backstage root role, does not have access to the different environments. It only have access to assume other roles which will have that access. Therefore, without following the process, the request will get access denied. Because the authentication design grant access to AWS by a group to environment mapping, we can have a scenario where two developers are members of the same group, developers, 
operate the same application, in this case application 1. Therefore, we need to distinguish between actions performed by developer 1 and actions performed by developer 2. The audit table, just as the security role mapping table, reside outside of Backstage Solution and have a strict resource policy. Action performed by users or by processes such as provisioning pipeline or GitLab pipeline are captured in the audit table. We capture information like what was the action, at what date time, the account and region the action was performed, the origin user initiated the request, the role that was assumed to execute this request, and the status of the request, such as success or failed. In addition, when a session is created for temporary credentials, the session name contained the user, so it's also possible to track AWS API calls using AWS CloudTrail. Thank you for watching this video on application development for Backstage.io on AWS.